Christine, it is so great to see you and I appreciate you being here with me this morning. Kristen, great to see you again as well. Thank you. Okay, you've covered this football team for years. You know the ins and outs here in this city. What was your initial reaction when the Washington Post article came out? Shock, disappointment, uh, it's, it's appalling. You know, you just, I mean, I lived some of this back in the 80s. This isn't the 80s, as you, as you well know, Kristen. This is 2020. And to think that there are 15 women with these allegations of sexual harassment and verbal abuse uh, under the roof of the Washington NFL team uh, and two reporters as well. And uh, who knows how many more who didn't want to speak. We don't know, maybe more, maybe not. But the breadth of it, you know, we're not talking about one or two or three women, which by the way, would still be incredibly significant. We're talking about 15 women. Uh, the reporting by uh, Liz Clark and Will Hobson, excellent. The time they took on this, of course, excellent. It's only allegations. You know, if you say if it's true, well, why wouldn't it not be true? Why would you know? Why would it not be true? It's 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 um, so it's it's just heartbreaking that women in the workplace uh, would have to deal with this at a team in, in an organization so many people are cheering for and, and people love and revere in a, a once proud organization that is now turned into basically a cesspool. And you look at the, you know, most of them were employees, obviously, which is so disheartening that this is happening under control from the executive team. Um, I knew one of the reporters, she was a former intern of ours who has worked her way up and didn't deserve any of this. None of them did. Even speaking up and the men still didn't respect uh, what they said and just kept pursuing it. You're a longtime friend with Larry Michael. And I think a lot of Redskins fans um, are just in shock that he's included in this. Yeah, I am as well. I've, I've known Larry and worked with Larry for, for years, pretty much since I came to Washington, which was 1984. Uh, Larry and I uh, have done countless TV and radio shows together. Uh, and uh, we have been friends. Uh, I would I'd see him every now and then at a dinner or a function, been on panels with him. And I am, uh, I'm shocked and uh, assuming it's true, uh, it's, it's appalling. And uh, obviously I, I dealt with none of that with Larry. And I also um, you know, have no knowledge of, of what Larry's life is like in the workplace. Uh, certainly now over the last, you know, whatever X number of years he's been uh, with, the, with, with Washington, with the NFL team. But, um, but I, I believe the women, I, I believe the women and uh, I, maybe Larry has something that he can say, but this is the kind of thing that, that ends a friendship. You mentioned something um, that you experienced back in the 80s covering this team. Can you share that with us? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I was a beat writer, uh, and I'm grateful to this day for that opportunity. Uh, the Washington Post put me on the beat in 85. I covered the team 85, 86, and 87, all the way through the, the January 88 Super Bowl, when uh, Washington actually won games and won Super Bowls back in the day. And it was a glorious uh, up time for me that helped shape me as the journalist I am to this day. So that is important to say. Um, but yes, I dealt with quite a bit. And certainly a couple of the highlights or lowlights would be the owner at the time, Jack Ken Cook, would come around practice and he would shake all the male reporters' hands. And I'm often the only woman there. I was the first to cover the team. And, and uh, he'd come up and, and lean in and kiss me. Now, I was able to quickly turn my cheek. So I'd, I'd take it on the cheek, but, or turn my head so I could take it on the cheek. But, um, you know, you, it, it was just, it was embarrassing and it wasn't good, but this is, who was I gonna complain to? No one wanted to hear a woman's complaints. Uh, he got the message because within a couple times of having that happen, he would then shake my hand as well. So these kinds of things were happening. Uh, again, I stress that uh, back then we just kept right on going. Nothing was gonna stop me. Uh, this was a dream job for me and an adventure of a lifetime, but it was horrible and of course, what happened then that we did not report, of course, now for those listening to us, this isn't funny. And back then we kind of laughed it off. No, it was awful. But in the 80s, no one wanted to hear it. And I certainly wasn't going to derail my career by complaining. Uh, you just didn't do that back then. Thankfully now women speak out as we're seeing in this Washington Post story. Yeah, and with that happening in the 80s and the way it was handled then, 
to everything we've gone through from the Me Too movement. Um, and, you know, two years ago, the Redskins dealt with this with the cheerleaders. It's still just surprising, but not that this still happens from the higher level. From your take with this team now, from the cheerleader incident two years ago to this report, what's the future of Dan Snyder? What's the future of this football franchise? I think Dan Snyder's in trouble. That, that can sound incendiary, Kristen. Uh, we don't know what the future is going to be. But if you're the man who owns this team and you've got this cesspool going on underneath you, I don't know why you should keep having the honor to own that franchise. If, if the NFL really cares about women, how do you allow an owner who is on top of an organization that is, that is this bad, allegedly? How do you allow that owner to keep the team? So if I'm commissioner of the NFL, which I'm not, <laughs> but if I am, I tell Dan Snyder to get out. I, I, and once there's a review and all of the things, you make sure that everything is, is accurate the way that, um, the way that Liz and, and Will reported it, then uh, I think Dan Snyder has lost uh, the opportunity, the ability to run that team. And, you know, it is such a proud franchise. Uh, people who are watching us right now, I'm sure think of the glory days uh, at RFK uh, and all those victories, the Super Bowls, Joe Gibbs, by the way, the classiest man, uh, never, ever a problem with Joe Gibbs, quite the opposite. He had no idea what was going on in some ways for sure uh, back in the day, but he was absolutely terrific to deal with every day. One of the classiest people I've ever dealt with, uh, an honorable and honest and just a wonderful person, even if we were mad at each other. Uh, yeah, which happened a lot when you're the beat writer for the Washington Post. Um, but you know, if 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 this is this this club, this is so important. This is a beacon. This is much more than just a sports team. This is one of the uh, preeminent franchises, not only in the NFL but in all of sports worldwide. One of the most popular. Uh, one of the most lucrative. And how in the world do you allow Dan Snyder to keep owning this team with this kind of behavior in the workplace? That even if Let's say he didn't know, he should have known. And if he knew, then for sure he's gone. So I know it sounds like, uh, you know, like the quote unquote sports death penalty, right? But I, I don't know how there's any other conclusion. I guess maybe a steep, steep fine. I mean, millions and millions of dollars uh, or maybe a suspension. But I think that Dan Snyder should lose the team. Will he lose the team? Uh, you know, that, that would be a, a quite a step by Roger Goodell, but it would be a wonderful step in the midst of all of our social awareness and social consciousness of 2020. It's, uh, it's, it's still so shocking, and but sadly, not the only team, not the only company that has to deal with this, and which is unfortunate in 2020 that we're still having to deal with this. But Christine, I appreciate you coming on this morning. I could continue to talk with you about this, but hopefully we'll be in touch soon because I know this is just the beginning of this story and, and hopefully this starts to create some change for, for women in the workplace in general. Absolutely. And these, these women that came forward um, with these allegations, uh, they're heroes. And for any women that are out there listening to us, uh, and men too, by the way, uh, who are having trouble, um, you, you, can, you do have a voice. I think that's one of the great messages of, the, of this. Again, allegations only right now, but um, we'll get to the bottom. I, obviously, people will get to the bottom of this. We'll find out the truth. And uh, when, when that happens, I think, again, we'll realize how, how strong these women have been and how wonderful that they decided to come forward.